everyone. A man once stood up at a prayer meeting and confessed that he'd been a drunkard, a wife-beater, been unfaithful, aggressive, a jailbird, a robber. You name it, he'd done it. And then he stuck out his chest and he said with all sincerity, well, I want to thank God that throughout these years I have never lost my religion. Now, the Gospel today is a warning against those who take their salvation for granted. Whenever it says in the Gospel that Jesus was making for Jerusalem like it does today, it's a symbolic way of saying that he was making for the city of destiny, where he would lay down his life for us. That was his narrow path, which would lead to resurrection. It involved rejection, humiliation and the cross. The devil, his and our adversary, had suggested to him in the desert to take the wide road of worldly power and recognition. But Jesus sends the devil packing. Following the narrow road of Jesus will almost certainly run counter to the wide road of the world. Judging what's right or wrong, true or false, solely on the strength of worldly wisdom alone would be foolhardy. Now, people often make moral judgments not on the basis of Catholic teaching, but from a purely worldly point of view, more often than not based on public opinion. St. Augustine said, Wrong is wrong even though everyone is doing it. Right is right even though nobody is doing it. They are like the locked out people in today's gospel who had only a peripheral knowledge of Jesus but who never took his teaching seriously. I think they were more fans of Jesus than followers. Have you ever been nagged for being over the top with your religion or for trying too hard? Maybe the real problem is that you're not trying hard enough. In today's gospel Jesus says... Try your best to enter by the narrow door, because many will try to enter and will not succeed. This doesn't at all mean that we see ourselves as artisans of our own salvation. Quite the contrary, it's about cooperating with the grace of God without which no one can be saved. Some Christians pride themselves on being saved in the here and now, but this can betray a dangerous spiritual smugness. Even the great Saint Paul was loath to entertain such notions. He said, I'm running in the race, but I'm far from thinking I've already won. Even though my conscience is clear, he said, it doesn't mean I'm acquitted even then. What does he mean? Well, he may have cut corners when informing his conscience. Or he may have made judgments on how he personally felt at the time, not based at all on the real situation. We all rightly hope and pray that our deceased loved ones are gone to a better place, but our ultimate destiny is in God's merciful hands. I think in this context I notice that the Catholic Catechism urges priests to ease up on long-winded eulogies at funerals because they can present an unreal picture of the deceased. God's eulogy is the only one that really matters. He'll be the ultimate judge of whether we've entered by the narrow door or not. Now, thank you all for listening. and God bless you all. Oh.